Okay, let's measure some capacitors. I'm not going to do any any, any uh, mathematics or anything. I'm not going to try to calculate or anything and make any hard measurements. I just kind of want to compare some things, just try some things out. Um, it's pretty interesting. So uh, my instrument is, is acting much better now that I have my new cable. So I've got this new uh, official Triax cable, and now when I wiggle the cable, the uh, the numbers don't change, whereas they did they did a little bit before, depending on the measurement. So uh, I have my, my, my box over here and I'll be putting uh, different capacitors in that box and then we can see what kind of uh, what kind of numbers come out here. That was in the way. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a um, uh, a capacitor. Uh, let's see, let's start with this 10 microfarad. Okay, put in a 10 microfarad capacitor and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, inside the box, I'm going to take a 9-volt battery and I'm going to charge the capacitor up with a 9-volt battery, okay? So there, I've charged, I've charged the battery, put the lid on the box, and we can go take a look at it. And so we can see that it, uh, you know, it, it was holding charge um, and uh, whatever leakage is in the capacitor, we can see it directly, right? So this capacitor is sort of leaky, right? And uh, it's 10, 10 microfarads, and we put nine volts on it, so. Uh, okay, this one leaks. Okay, so uh, that's this little, uh, it's, what kind of brand is it? Uh, kind of a no-name brand. I've got a bunch of these. I, I picked up like a couple hundred of them for like a couple bucks. All right, so let's take a look at something else. Let's take a look at something uh, interesting. Uh, here is a, another uh, kind of an off-brand capacitor. This one is 22 microfarads. Okay, so let's put that in here. 22 microfarads. And let's charge him up. So there we go. Just have to touch the leads on it and boom, we're charged. And you can see this one leaks too. Oh, let me put the lid. Let me put the lid on the box to be consistent with everything. It doesn't really seem to matter much in this in this particular measurement, but there we go again. We're uh, uh, doing stuff. Let me make this video a little bit better here. Let's put the box. Let's put the box over here so you can watch me do stuff. I think that'd be more. That would be more more interesting. Is that in the frame? Yeah, it's all in the frame. Yeah, let's leave it. Let's leave it there. All right, so let's take this one out. This one's kind of leaky. It's kind of a no name too. This is a TC brand. I don't know TC brand. I don't know what that is. All right, so let's try this one out. Now this is a Nichicon, and it says it's a PET, so polyethyl trichloro. I don't know PET, whatever that is. Um, but it's Nichicon, and I believe it's a it's a it's a good. Uh, Nichicon has different grades and stuff. I think this is a good this is a good Nichicon. And so we will come over here and we will charge it up. There we go. And we will look. And I think you can see right away, this capacitor is a way, 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 way better. <laughs> you can see it's not leaking. Uh, it's leaking very, very, very slowly. So yeah, go Nichicon. Um, so yeah, you get what you pay for. So I think this is a great demonstration. You know, you hear about leaky capacitors or expensive capacitors. People, eh, capacitor's capacitor, but here you go. You know, you pay the extra money, you get a good Nichicon capacitor, and look what you get. You get something that just is stellar, right? Really is stellar. That's, that's, that's pretty amazing. Now, with electrolytic capacitors, you know, you, you, you can actually see these numbers actually go up a little bit sometimes, too. So, um, yeah, electrolytics are crazy, but look at this thing. It is just super, super stable. You'd be here all day um, waiting for this thing to leak, right? So, yeah, so what kind of capacitor was that again? It is a uh, Nichicon PET. Uh, it is polarized. It is a 100 microfarad, 16 volt. So yeah, I like that one a lot. All right, how about a tantalum? Okay, here's a tantalum. This is a, oh God, it's too small for me to read. 
uh, 106. So what is that? A 10, 10, I think that's a 10, 10 microfarad. Let's pop him in here. Oops. Did I push a button? I think I accidentally pushed a button. Did I, is everything okay here? Auto range filter. I think I pushed the filter button on. That doesn't matter. All right, so that's in here. Let's charge him up. All right, and I'll put the lid on. And there you go. He's a little bit leaky, but not too, too bad. Not as bad as this Ultralytics. It's pretty stable. A tantalum, solid tantalums are supposed to be pretty good. Um, so, yeah. Uh, tantalums also have a very low ESR. So, they do have a bad reputation for shorting out, though. At least the old, old versions of them. I don't know about newer tantalums if they're less prone to that or not, but uh, when tantalums go bad, they short. But you can see the, the leakage is quite good on it, so, okay. All right, so this one is a one microfarad ceramic, okay? So this is solid state, you know, no, no chemicals, so. Let's pop him in there. He's got one and a half volts on him. Okay, bring on our power supply. Charge him up. Oops. There we go. Put the lid on. So, um, yeah, I, I was a little shocked actually with this one. I thought the uh, ceramic would, would be a little less leaky than this, but it, uh, yeah, it's fairly leaky. Um, interesting. So that's one microfarad. Um, so let's try a smaller, uh, smaller ceramic. So this is a 0 0.01. Okay. Let's put him in here. Point, point zero 0.01. And let's charge him up. Oops. All right. And take a look at that. Now, uh, with some, you know, confusing the data, you know, there is the ability to hold charge, which is the microfarads, and then uh, the leakage is the, um, you know, how, how long does it bleed off. And um, so I think this one is actually quite good. It is leaking, um, but it's only 0 0.01 microfarad, and it's not leaking too fast. So I think this is a pretty good, pretty good capacitor. Okay, so now let's try a capacitor that's like supposed to be good, right? If you're interested in a, a capacitor that is like super, super good, quiet, stable, doesn't doesn't leak and everything, this is a polypropylene or polyethylene, poly, polypropylene, one of these yellow jobbers. Uh, this one is uh, 0 0.027 microfarads, plus or minus 5%, 100 working volts. Uh, Mid Midweck, I don't know, I don't know the brand name, but I know it's a good one. I know it is a high quality, high quality capacitor. And let me charge him up. Oops, get my polarity right here. All right, there we go. Put the lid on there. And yeah, so so you have a, the very best capacitor. I think that's pretty probably a pretty expensive capacitor as far, far as capacitors go. Um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't leak much at all, right? Um, anyway, so I thought it was a good, a good uh, you know, good range of capacitors, different types. Um, you know, ceramics, this is a film capacitor, much, much better. Um, there's probably some lower grade film capacitors that we could test and stuff. I haven't tried out every single capacitor, but I found it interesting enough to, to at least shoot a quick video here on, on capacitances. Now, uh, we could probably measure how many volt change over so many minutes and do a calculation on how many, what the leakage current we believe we're seeing 
Um, but I'm not that interested. <laughs> um, you can see it's, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty stable. Um, now, I don't know if I just left it overnight, what it would look like in the morning, but, you know, I bet you it's, <laughs> I bet you it's probably at least eight volts in the morning. Um, not too bad. Anyway, a quick look at uh, capacitor leakage uh, using a electrometer. Uh, input impedance is greater than 20 tera ohms, so we are not leaking uh, uh, very, very much at all. Um, I could improve the test setup just a tiny, tiny bit. I have um, uh, nylon standoffs uh, insulators in here instead of um, Teflon. Teflon is a little bit better. Uh, I don't know in this particular case whether it's enough to matter or not, but I know if you're trying to squeak every little last bit out, uh, Teflon is a little bit better than nylon. Um, but I already had threaded, threaded uh, standoffs. So I just used one of those because it was quick to do. If I, if I tried to use some, uh, I think I do have some Teflon, but I'd have to machine it and uh, build some standoffs. But I think you can see, yeah, this capacitor is doing pretty good. 0 0.027, right? Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's holding its charge great. 